Hi everybody, um, I wanted to do a uh, look at the uh, world's most important farm land uh, in Asia, specifically in India here, Pakistan and Bangladesh. Um, so I would also like to look at the uh, United States, uh, Europe and China as well and even here in Australia and Africa and South America. But um, really when you look about uh, population and farming, uh, India and China are basically the most uh, significant uh, in terms of both food and population. So I wanted to take a careful look uh, at what's going on in India um, and also China later. But we're going to kind of start by looking at India, Pakistan here, and Bangladesh. So first of all, we're talking about a huge uh area of land uh, and a lot of different farms so i'm just kind of uh you know at awe here uh with all the farms going on uh, it's a huge task to discuss uh all the farmland uh, in india but um basically um most of the farmland is in the north here um and uh, basically in this uh, valley here uh, so there's basically the Himalaya mountains here uh, and then kind of another kind of sort of a mountainous area here but uh, basically in this valley is where um, most of the people live and the farming is so I'll show you kind of a bigger picture map here of the river system but uh, basically what you can see is that there is this major river here uh, Genghis River heading out of New Delhi um, and then you also have Pakistan here and then Bangladesh um, so along this uh, kind of it's interesting because the cleaner water obviously comes from the mountains and less clean as you get further down the river um, but uh, the farming is basically in this region here so let's just go through some statistics of what India is farming. So basically, mostly rice. Uh, believe it or not, uh, the second most is probably in terms of dollar value um, is uh, milk, cow milk. So buffalo milk is actually huge. Wheat is huge uh, and so on. And then they got the price per kilogram and other things. So um, this is kind of a... a interesting uh, way to look at it but you can also look at uh, tons of so actually sugar is the most in terms of mass um, and then you have rice wheat potatoes bananas mangoes uh, onions tomatoes coconuts and so on so um, I grabbed the data from the FAO and kind of did the data myself to double check on some things. So I put uh, yield is different than tons. So you can see here, uh, this is sugar cane and then this is rice. So relatively speaking, uh, it's about twice as much. Uh, this is from, I think, uh, 2020 is the data. So you can see that the basically this is the main... Uh, areas you got potatoes here and then you got uh, fruits being pretty large uh, corn actually being pretty significant as well um, another way to do this is to grab this data and do a log scale and you can kind of see uh, what's on the same scale here so basically most of them are under uh, this is in tons so you can see that is about what is that? Uh, 10 million tons so uh, everything above 10 million tons there's certain crops here um, that are above that um, the yield is interesting to see uh, as well I did this on a, a log graph um, but you can see uh, this is per hectare so G per hectare now I had to look up hectare to find out exactly what this is it's actually super helpful to understand let me show you what that is here so uh, basically the simple definition is 100 meters by 100 meters um, and once you get into the details you can see that this is basically 100 meters by 100 meters so it's like a football field um, this is an important number to know about because uh, the average human on earth uses about two hectares um, and even up to eight hectares in the United States. So eight football fields is basically one year's supply of food, which is an unbelievable amount of land. I cannot even believe that number, but that's a huge number. So, uh, but let's look at that number in careful detail so you can see. So here's some of that data um, to see. I'll zoom in here and you can see that 
Earth's biocapacity is about at two, and yet um, quite a number of countries are using nine football fields or even almost ten football fields worth of ecological footprint. So it's just unbelievable. United States here, um, Norway, Australia, Canada, just huge amounts of land, Eight fo <laughs> 10 football fields worth of stuff. Now, most of these are down in here, but you can see um, it actually is probably about three, which is, according to some people, is not sustainable. And I would say for sure that's probably the truth. So um, there is another way to look at it here. Um, this is an interesting map too, showing each region. So you can see that Africa definitely is really good on how much uh, you know space they're using and they're just eating their food. So, uh, and you can see Asia Pacific here getting up to about three or even four, and then even some places in Asia getting up to eight. And you can see there's even some in the Middle East that are using 16. So uh, that's just huge. And you can see in Europe in general, it's about six hectares per person. So this is super helpful data to look at. Um, but again, we're looking at India here. So uh, when you look at Asia, you got to go right here, which is basically gray. So there's basically even in India, they're kind of struggling. Uh, maybe one of these dots down in here, but basically... Basically, that's uh, the numbers that we're seeing here. So, at first, when I didn't have this map, I was unable in some regions like in Africa or South America. It is, actually, there's very few farms, but that is not the case in India. As you can see, almost the entire country of India and Pakistan. So, Pakistan actually extends off into the desert here. There's not quite a lot of farms there. Uh, and you can see Bangladesh here. Um, pretty much covered in farm but there is quite a lot of floodplain here as well so uh, what I would say is that you have to look at this map as well this is the soil map so you can see that basically all of Bangladesh is a floodplain uh, and they're farming on the floodplain and you can see there's some flooding here uh, along the mountain range here as well so that could be great soil um, but you get flooding and you don't know um, and when you look at the rain maps you'll be quite surprised how much rain uh, India gets sometimes even six meters of, I, I couldn't believe that number, but at least a meter or more of rain uh, in a matter of a few months. So that's a huge amount of rain to think about. So the uh, flooding primarily happens over in this region here, but you'll see on the maps later that there is quite a lot. So let's get into the details of looking at the farms. So you might find this map helpful just before we get into all the details, but you can see this is a climate map. You can see kind of the various regions uh, in India and in Pakistan, right? So actually quite different climate as you get towards Pakistan, and this is actually pretty ideal for farming. So I just want to zoom out so you can kind of see, compare this to Africa and even the United States. So you can see primarily in the United States here you have a green region uh, and then some more climate similar to India down in Florida so basically uh, not very similar to India but Europe is pretty similar to the United States so India is actually quite warm uh, climate uh, similar to Florida um, for the most part in here and then you got some greener area but this is a lighter green area um, so it's quite different, uh, but when I turn off these maps, I actually mixed a couple different ones, uh, World Cup and map, uh, to kind of see uh, what's going on. So I'm going to turn these maps off here, and then you're going to start to be able to see some of the farmland um, in, as we zoom in here. So one point that I'd make is on the river map. Um, so basically in the United States, uh, the most important farming land is pretty much in the middle of the Mississippi River down around Memphis. Um, that area is basically the uh, best in terms of the amount of money farmers are making, as well as temperature and soil and a lot of uh, there is some rain there too, but not as much as in India. So we're going to primarily focus on this region. 
and then actually up into here because this gets into cross border areas and then also Bangladesh. Um, there is a lot of farming in here too. So, but this area you can see is not really uh, farmed, uh, but you can see uh, primarily this whole region here. Um, you can see there's kind of different style of farming in this region as well. So perhaps even a little bit up on the river here and up in there is perhaps India's most important and critical farm line and actually getting towards uh, Pakistan and also Bangladesh here there is some pretty interesting farms so uh, the reason that I'm very interested in this Bangladesh area is because there's basically a floodplain here the soil is unbelievably good there's certainly a lot of rain so you don't need to do irrigation like you would in other parts of the world um, a significant irrigation but there still is a lot of irrigation there in India so I just wanted to re-review this so again we have sugarcane rice um, and there is a lot of uh, more data here as well. So it's also important to compare. Um, you can see the uh, average yield per, uh, so you can compare that to what the best is. So you can see um, India is number one on uh, milk actually. So uh, wheat you can see is uh, kind of behind here on uh, what they're doing per hectare. But, uh, again, uh, important to understand what the hectare is, so you should definitely uh, look at this information here and just kind of say, hey, it's about a football field or a soccer field, uh, thousand or 100 meters by 100 meters. So the irrigation data is pretty helpful to look at. You can see the state of Punjab, um, which is kind of uh, just outside of New Delhi there. Um, that area is pretty much the largest Uttar Pradesh and Rajasthan and West Bengal and some other areas. So you can see the productivity of each region as well. Um, so you can see uh, Punjab also being most productive and uh, the most farming. Uh, percent percentage uh, under irrigation. This is unbelievable numbers. So you can see that uh, almost 100% of some of these regions is their most their most uh, significant farmland is also almost 100% uh, irrigated. So irrigation is no joke, super important uh, to uh, look. If you've ever visited a farm, um, I was recently visiting one, I was totally amazed. Every single plant was irrigated per plant. Uh, had a little water spout on it. Um, so irrigation is incredibly important um, and it's just a massive uh, undertaking to do uh, water all over your farm. Uh, they also had covered uh, all of the, uh, there was like a greenhouse for every single place. Uh, there was uh, pr primarily about 70% or even 80% was greenhouse uh, for uh, common household uh, foods. Uh, you know tomatoes and things like that so um but basically you can see uh you know there is some uh yeah, basically you're talking about almost 100 percent irrigation here uh so these soil maps are pretty interesting to look at um i have been really studying these primarily comparing them to the united states and other parts of the world so you can see um, basically that this orange dirt, uh, some of it, basically the blue dirt is perhaps the best, but it's also a floodplain. Ah, sorry about that. I had to go get myself a glass of water. I was really thirsty here. So, um, yeah, so basically when you really look at it, um, even the rain isn't enough. Um, it's unbelievable how much rain India gets, and yet almost 100% irrigation in some areas. So, and, and in fact, they're most important area, Punjab up in here. So uh, I would say take some time and think about what you think is interesting uh, in terms of farming uh, soil and rain and rivers. So basically take a look at the river map carefully and kind of decide what area you think is most interesting um, you can also look at the population map uh, of India to kind of give you some idea. So you can see uh, this area here is pretty populated, but basically right in here you have kind of the best mix of medium kind of population in India uh, as well as 
uh, farming and you can see the farming even gets uh, kind of population even gets more sparse as you head towards Pakistan and then it gets into even heavier pa right as you cross the border uh, into Pakistan <coughs> population suddenly goes up again so uh, super important to look at these maps now you can also zoom in here and kind of see the details uh, even within New Delhi how vast the city is um, and the specs here all are uh, lots of people so um, it isn't like this all over the world um, and you can see there's the floodplain kind of uh, separates where people can live um, right on the water here so if you zoom in here I, I zoomed into this valley region here uh, just outside of in between New Delhi so there's basically this city right here is perhaps India's most important farming area and city right kind of halfway in between this major farming area and this major farming area um, and I was really surprised how much rice is uh, made in Bangladesh so we're gonna start by looking at India and hopefully get into some details on the other countries on the side as well so I'll just show you the rice map right now this is the rice explorer and you can get uh, quite a lot of data here so you can kind of see where rice is made uh, grown uh, you can see all throughout Asia here so basically it's unbelievable how much is uh, in Bangladesh there so the rice seasons is also super interesting to look at here you can see India basically has two seasons called a uh, Karif and Arabi and then in Bangladesh they call they actually have three seasons so um, that's because it's actually a little bit warmer in Bangladesh and also much more rainy uh, in Bangladesh. So you can see there are some seasons that they do not uh, <clears throat> actually do the farming. So if you can't farm rice, um, you know, you're basically out of water or some other problem like that. So, um, but basically Bangladesh has a lot of rice being farmed. So you can see on this map, um, it is nice to zoom in and you can see the percentage of the state. So, it shows you each region um, and exactly what's going on in that region. So it's uh, important not to underestimate uh, Bangladesh, even though it shows a lot of flood planning here with these red zones, and this is kind of a no farming area. But there certainly is a lot of farming in rice uh, there. So let's zoom in and actually look at what the structure looks like for the farming in this region. So here we are on the main map. Um, we basically had New Delhi here, and then we had the river system here, and the farming. So you can see um, this really depends on the season, the greenness of it, um, as well as the clouds. So I'm using Google Earth here, um, but I'm gonna zoom in, uh, and you're gonna start to see. So this is Punjab. This is the war area where India has their most productive farming, but it's also heavily irrigated, and you can see why. Um, it's heavily irrigated. There's not really any even rivers going through there, so they must uh, pull the water from somewhere. Um, the aquifers, from what I understand, are being drained. So there's underground. Most of the world gets their water from underground sources. Um, that is being depleted. Um, in general, the underground water is better where the rivers are. So that's because the water has been uh, running there for quite some time. Sorry, I had to get another drink here. Um, so, like in the Mississippi River, the base of the Mississippi, under the rock of the ground, is hidden water. So, <clears throat> we can pretty much anticipate that the aquifer is best right in here, right around Bangladesh. Um, so, you not only have the river system, but you also have underground water as well. So, this Punjab area is questionable, but it is basically, you can see it looks the greenest, and it looks like India is doing the most farming there. Um, but this Uttar Pradesh area is also very interesting. Um, <clears throat> and what you'll see when we look at the rain maps, we'll try to look at those next here. You can kind of see how the rain system. So you can definitely see that this looks like farmland. Um, it would be important to compare this to the United States so you can kind of see how different uh, some of these farmlands look on satellite. I'll show you a slightly different perspective as we zoom in here. So you can kind of see we're looking up towards Pakistan and kind of coming through Bangladesh. Um, and we're going to zoom in here and hopefully that will load up. Uh, I might even have to turn off the cities just because it's so cluttered here. So I'm going to keep the cities on because it's just 
a little bit hard to find these yourself. So uh, if you're kind of looking at this, you can kind of see. So it's going to start to load in here. Sorry, it's going to take some while, but you'll see uh, basically some of these farming regions here. Um, so the part that we're really interested in is Uttar Pradesh and looking at these other areas just outside of New Delhi. So here's New Delhi. And we had look now and uh, basically these areas so you can start to see um, what's going on let me let me straighten this map out so you can kind of see what's going on I'll close this out so there you go so okay so before we get sorry about this we want to look a little bit at the rain situation so you can see basically the rain is kind of here and here depending on the month so I'm gonna go through here and show you how vastly different well, it's changing here. So you see, uh, as we go, this is for months. So you can start to see now, uh, January, February, you start to get a huge amount of rain coming in. And this is on 600 millimeters. So quite a lot, almost a full meter there of rain um, in one month. So now it's starting to even pull up more. And you can see by the fourth month, uh, April, there's just a ton of rain coming in. And that's pretty much hitting all right in there. Um, so that's quite a lot of rain. And you can see it builds up even more the next month, fifth month of the year, uh, sixth month of the year. And then it's seventh, it starts to die down again, uh, July. Um, and you can see that it kind of really quickly uh, drops off 10, 11, and so on. So, uh, and then the rain heads back down south. Um, so you can see even in Africa here and some other regions, I'll just go through one more time so you can see. So this is all the way up to uh, the third month. So, and this is pretty um, important because it actually varies. Uh, depending on the year, you might be able to grab the data uh, differently. There's a couple different data explorers here. So I grab participation three month, five kilometer, and then you have long term monthly average. So that one, that map is actually pretty helpful to look at. Let me see if I can load that up here. Uh, monthly average, uh, let's see, three month, I'll turn this off. So this map looks a little bit different. Um, and you can see, we'll just do this for January. Um, and I'll go through these really quick uh, so you can see them again January, February, March, April, May and then now you start to see the rain come in uh, so you can see this whole coast is unbelievable amount of rain July even picking up more so these are the monthly averages so maybe this is slightly better to look at so you can see here um, some of these regions. So this this area is kind of surprising. So there might be some uh, actual farming possibilities here, but uh, throughout most of the seasons, you actually may need to do some irrigation as well. So uh, and then here you can see September and then October. So it's a little bit different map um, than the other one. So it looks like we've been getting a little bit more rain uh, than usual uh, in India compared to what these maps show. Um, but if we go back to the main month uh, around uh, May, you can see, uh, let's see, Junior. So you can start to see the, the rain comes in uh, and hits the coast. There's the mountain range here and so on. So again, uh, the river system is super important. Um, it's actually surprising how far out this goes and then back in. So actually this, this river here is actually uh, as important, this middle river kind of the section and then this one here. So um, in terms of the farming, you can kind of see where those rivers are here on this map. Uh, and then uh, even when we get up into Pakistan. So when you zoom out, you really start to notice that where China's doing their farming is pretty much all floodplain. So if we were to go back here, let me zoom out to more of the world perspective, you start to see that this floodplain here, um, basically that's all floodplain. Let me move this over here to bring it back here. So basically that's floodplain and then floodplain. So it's not only soil, but you also have uh, a lot of rain in Bangladesh and so on. So, um, but basically you can see, um, even though it looks like Bangladesh is not necessarily, uh, you know, basically it was kind of divided off as a entire floodplain country and then actually became pretty important uh, for farming. So, 
and it's really important to understand Pakistan here because there's just so many people in Pakistan uh, surprising the number here um, and really what's going on here is a lot of people uh, wanted to that are trying to travel into Europe and Asia um, basically ended up in Pakistan or even Afghanistan um, kind of got stuck here and then you can see kind of the population as it heads off into Russia so uh, kind of quite a different uh, pathway uh, into Europe than you might think um, basically this whole area here so um, but uh, the farmland here um, basically through here so you can see actually having a population question here um, you're starting to see a lot of people here um, as well as the farmland so you can see that that's kind of uh, a lot of people are actually moving into that region so the long-term situation on food is kind of interesting you can see this yellow line here is agriculture um, so actually there's a couple important points here you can see right here in 2009 um, the uh, agriculture was actually going up and then in 2013 kind of things started to go down in fact so you actually had more agriculture uh, exports uh, in india back in 2013 than you do today so that's kind of an interesting question you can see that raw materials have been uh, pretty much the main exports as well as services so uh, and textiles so you can see clothing industry is actually falling in india um, and some other areas so <clears throat> super interesting graph uh, to look at over time um i think this one can show us some details per sector so you can see basically india is kind of falling out on the agriculture side um and actually services even everything is kind of not looking so great for india uh in terms of <coughs> exports so um, and that kind of started right here in around 2019 or 2018. So you can see uh, that's been, uh, and there's another hump that uh, dropped here. Um, but it is interesting to look at this. I was surprised how little food India exports. So you can see there's just almost all consumption here um, and they're primarily focused on uh, actually technology and 33% of the economy is services so as well as travel and tourism so even these two themselves um, make up the size of the entire food economy so um, there is petroleum diamonds and some others um, you can see cotton and cars and some other areas but uh, super interesting to see uh, this so I'm just going to show you the global climate map really quick so you can kind of see what's going on. So again, this region here. So actually, India is farming in a region that China is not. So in terms of climate, so the climate is actually slightly, I don't know, it's a debate. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, the China China has this like purple area here that they're kind of farming in um, as well as some of this. So there's some pretty rocky mountains and hills, so it kind of makes it difficult to farm along the coast here, uh, whereas India has pretty flat land uh, in the valley compared to along the hills there. Let's zoom in and take a look at the details here. I'm gonna load uh, this one in a new tab and Bangladesh. Um, so those are gonna take some time to load here, but give me a second. So here's kind of the rice map uh, in detail for India, so you can see um, basically what's going on for rice so you can see basically uh, Bangladesh some of this climate of West Bengal which is basically part of India is actually pretty heavy for rice so my suspicion is that if you can farm rice you can farm pretty much any other kind of crop so because it's so water intensive um, and things like that so you can see some of the other areas so there may be some other opportunities for farming in here Bangladesh you can see actually surprisingly uh, they're not really farming the rice uh, right in the floodplain, but uh, it doesn't really show the details. So uh, but you can see some of the other areas here. Quick map, quick map for Pakistan as well. You can see um, surprisingly um, this area is actually rice farming. And then you can see down here uh, towards Karachi and then up in here for rice farming. So kind of interesting to rethink about how the farming is done in pakistan i would have to take a look at this very carefully um rajasthan down in here um so when we look at india you can see uh this is the rajasthan part but there's punjab uh, doing some rice farming there so um 
quite an interesting map to look at in detail uh, for each crop. So you can get this map um, globally and then you can also get it um, <clears throat> for each individual country. So I actually recommend trying to find the individual country. It's a little bit difficult. You gotta kind of go through here, click on uh, this or search for it. So it turns out that the map um, for <clears throat> Google Earth is actually sometimes different and slightly it could be better to look at the map uh, that's the one from the internet. Um, I, I don't know, it just seems like you can kind of see things a little bit in different detail. So again, you can kind of see it this farm, but the farming land looks like mostly in Punjab there. So I may uh, leave the topic for right now and then we can actually go into more detail even later, uh, specifically for Pakistan, Bangladesh, um, and actually even look at some individual farms. Um, but this is the overview here. Um, I hope uh, it's been super helpful uh, and you've learned a lot. What I'm really looking for is a map like this where you can see individual dots for per crop. So each color represents a different crop. It'd be great to get a world map like this. Um, so that we could zoom in and find who to specifically work with. So if you're interested in farming a particular type of crop, crop or vegetables, um, you can do that. I'm also working on trying to set up some farm tours if you're interested in helping out to try to set up a local farm tour no matter where you are in the world. That would be awesome. Here is some ideas on how to do that. Um, basically a document. Uh, this is a really a start project so we're really trying to get it going uh, and actually visit some farms, uh, some local churches mosques and temples and just work with the community to try to visit some farms so if you're interested in actually more data the fao probably best just to take the maps here but if you need the actual numbers um, that i imported i got them from this website here so let me know what your thoughts are on farming in india um, certainly we looked at this valley here um <clears throat> look at the rivers and the population there's a whole lot of other areas for farming um, that are interesting and it's also super important to think about where not to farm um, because of the wildlife so you can see that basically all of india has been taken over uh, with farming and that is not necessarily good so uh, as we plan for what we want to do in africa for example west africa might become a gigantic farm uh, like india so hard to imagine that but you can already see in nigeria um, which is one of the most populated countries in africa quite a bit is turning into farmland uh, not as dense as india yet um, but certainly um, just india um, right here you can see probably just this chunk here could probably support uh, close to a billion people believe it or not so that's an unbelievable amount of numbers so uh, i would say take a look at these uh, data here on the uh, footprint data um, and take a careful look at that um, and think about uh, what it takes uh, to get food uh, just for me and you and everybody here on earth um, you can also see um, quite a lot of food is imported, about 20% is imported, I was shocked, uh, into Pakistan and India from Indonesia alone. So it doesn't look like there's very much farming here, but actually even these slight little blue dots um, actually help significantly. Um, so I don't know what's going on, but a lot of this farming, at least in the United States, is corn and soybeans, which is just being used to feed animals, So, um, which are eventually also fed uh, to people but i'm a vegetarian so it's pretty interesting to see um, how few farms um, of these farms are actually vegetables but it may be actually different um the united states maps are quite different i'll just do a quick thing because i've been drinking some water during this presentation um so you can kind of see uh how much water so the average person uh drinks uh, about 1240 cubic per year per person so cubic meters um so that's unbelievable amount of water um wow so i, I just <laughs> i just can't believe how much water is going on and you can see that this only a small fraction of the water here is actually drinkable water all this is salt water so um super interesting think about it you can see kind of the water consumption by countries so you can see uh, certain countries certainly are using more water than others so we're gonna look at this global map one more time. So 
basically it's unbelievable amount of farming done in India. That's why we're talking about it. Um, you see that actually up in Canada here, quite a lot of farming. Um, believe it or not, a lot of this is just corn and soybeans, so it's not even used necessarily for people. It's uh, ethanol and other ways. So there's a big question of difference between farming in India and say uh, North America um, and even China. So hope this has helped. Let me know if you got any questions. Be glad to talk with you about it.